yo what's up designers how are you doing so in the last video we talked about the style guide and workflow setting workflow frameworks and all those good stuff in this video we're going into the meat of things we are building the hero section from this page yeah we're building this section today in workflow by missing the button we can also if there's enough time within an hour we also make this nav bar but with all that said let's get into it i hope you're excited like me or like as me or whatever yeah so let's get let's build this hero section first first things first what do we need before you start building i want you to study something i just look like a mobile i miss some tweaks on mobile so on mobile this is how it looks like this is even wrong it's meant to be feel that's even way wrong so let's move it to feel as one fill width and bottom all the way and that's that i was thinking should i make it animating or I'll just make it sliding different interactions you can do there and also you can see the image is cropped unlike here it's bit wide yeah it's cropped but also the text is also well cropped there's no padding at the edges there and all these things are what you keep in mind as you're building so you know how you approach the viral build you know so with all that said um Let's get into it. I'll be showing you my thought process behind implementing something like this in Webflow. We'll start with, as you remember, we know we set our style guide already over here. Let's not do that again. Come to here, body, control E, div. I'm writing client's first framework, so we'll start with the page wrapper. Then under div E, div, and we'll call this on the main wrapper. I think there's a short because let's say div. So now we we'll have a section here. Section. Now that's what I told you about in the last video. I mentioned something about using semantics, default semantics by HTML. A section is an example of semantics. If you come over here to settings, you can make a section a div, footer, nav, and other stuff. But when you use section, for some reason, it just helps with SEO and stuff. Even me too. Some of the things I help. Right now, I've not learned much about it. The one I know, I use mostly the section, so I just use it by default. But it doesn't change if you use a div you're still good to go no problem just telling you some things that i know yeah um so section yeah from the section let's call this the hero section hero section now the way we'll build this hero section is different from the way we're going to build other sections of the website hero section yeah because if you notice the other section has a, has a specific style. There's a pattern here and everything. Why the other section that looks like black, white, white, black, you know? But this one has like, oh, there's multiple layers. There's a layer of dark, and there's a layer of the image there. Then this. So, how we're going to approach that is giving this arrow section a minimum viewport height of 100, 100 VH, minimum height of 100 VH. What does this mean? It means that if your browser width is 100, I mean, whatever I've seen, the way I see me on YouTube now with the whole stuff is 100. I almost sneeze just now. It's 100 VH. I'm going to say minimum height of 100 VH. I mean, it can never go below 100 VH, but it can go above that. So that's the concept I'm trying to tell you. Um, so just to show you, this is it. Change the color, it's there. If I remove this under VH now, it goes back here. If I take it back under VH, so that's just something. We don't need this color. I'll just use it as an example to show you something. So from under V, under VH, that's the I mean, that's the hero section container. They will not give it a new div. I'll call this div hero wrap. Now, if as I'm building that section, you know I'm using there's a client first guideline where there's Padding global, padding section medium, other stuff. Why I'm not doing that right now is because the build process of the home page of the euro section is different. Like I said earlier, it's not the same. The studying and other stuff is not the same. This is the reason why I'm not following that rule. As I build the other sections, you'll notice that I'll, there's a specific way I'll be doing it. Just let you know my thought process. Then we'll call this an euro wrap. And again, you can name all this as anything you want, but I just, it's just nice to use the client's first naming style. It will help you. Shit, I name it wrongly. Hero Rap. So for Hero Rap now, one thing I realized, so let me show you something. So main wrapper now, we can change the color of the main 
I think we wrap up page wrapper. Let's change the color of the page wrapper to background color black, background color primary. So this is, in the style guide, if you want to start that video, we've already done this already. So if you are confused about what I'm doing, I'm sorry, but we've said it already. Then that's background color primary. Then the hero section is here. Hero wrap. One thing I realized about the hero wrap is that even though the hero section is 100 VH, minimum of 100 VH, if you give this hero wrap 100%, it would it's not take the whole screen. If you look at it now, it doesn't take the whole screen. And I don't know why. So I've been trying things out with this. Um, let's see something about 100 VH. 100 VH. Huh. It does take the whole screen here. Yeah. I think this is okay. So I didn't try this the last time, but now this is new. Um, the hero wrap now takes the whole screen of the hero section. Previously, if it was minimum of 100 VH alone, the hero wrap will not take the whole screen. Do you get what I'm to say? God, I can't, this can be very confusing to anybody watching this. So let me give you an illustration near the arc window here. Yeah. Excavator. Um, you guys must understand this thing. You must understand. So this is this is a tool I use to like just sketch some things out when I want to understand some things better. Um so let's say this is your browser. Hmm? This is your screen. The wall height from here to here. Um is what 100 vh that's the whole height for the height viewport height that's the meaning and if you are looking at it from the width too it is called um it's called 100 viewport width so that's viewport vw now what is funny about this thing is that no matter what the screen you are using a big desktop a small desktop um a laptop a phone under vh remains under vh you get me so it's adjust based on the screen resolution of the device you are using mind blowing right i know what's not important is that because this design is specifically designed that this hero section is what you see on screen when you put when you put to the page. This is what you first see before you can ask and see that sense. It is important that you keep this hundred VH. So whether it's on the big screen or the small screen or whatever, hundred VH. And um, yeah, what I've been using previously was min minimum height of hundred VH. That means it can never go below hundred VH, but it can go more than that. And what I realized is that if I put anything inside minimum height of 100 VH, so anything here, I want it to be, it's like it at 100 percent. So if you understand, if you get me, what I'm trying to say now is that if I have a pop of water, let's name, is it, I have a bottle of water here. This bottle of water is 100 VH. If I give it 100 percent water, it's supposed to get full, right? It's supposed to get full, like 100 percent full of water. Yes, it will work if the body is 100 VH. But if the body is minimum of 100 VH. If you give 100% of water, it's not going to happen because it's minimum of so it doesn't really have a specific size until it is fixed. So that's the mistake I've been making in my last build. So I just realized that oh, that was a mistake I made, and also I, now it's working well. And I thought that it's best I explain this this way. If this analogy was explanation to you, please let me know because this is the first time I'm doing something like this. So if you get it, let me know. Let's continue. Um, you wrap. So yeah, I just gave it color to let you guys know that that was there. Um, so now the hero section, we're going to give it, what's this here, 24 pixels padding all round. So that is padding 24. Remember we told you we're going to be using RAM often. RAM is um, 1 pixels, or the 1 RAM is 16 pixels. So 24 pixels is 1.5 RAM. We're going to give this all round. So you're going to press Alt and Shift to give the padding on all sides. That's a shortcut for you to know. I think I'll put tabs on shortcuts, like put a tab shortcuts to know if that if I have energy to edit the videos. So yeah, that's it. That's this. Wow, we're done with that. So now for the hero wrap now. This thing we're seeing here now, if you look at it, this here is the hero section. That's it, we've done it already. This one here is the hero wrap. You get now. So this is the one that we're gonna give the image in the background. So we're gonna like we click on this image from Nathaniel Geo. 
you can preview it here like okay these are the images you're going to export and you export it so it doesn't matter if the image is very big or not what is it's what it looks like in the frame that will show you and that will export and when you export it it's going to come out i've exported it already and i recommend you compress it using the tools i mentioned in the browser in my last email compress png optimate and let me just give you an example of how this compression works so for next time so let me just show you something um export hero um, hero image so so now this is an example of how the exposure exports exposure export works so you just press save you export there then from there if you want to compress the image you open your file so now this is the image i'm going to export if you look at it now sorry this is the image if you look at it, it's 1.2 mb i'm going to open this ultimate app now ultimate open up i'll just drag the image from there this only works on macbook by the way only macbook and just look at it it will be it will compress the image now and you'll be surprised to see how well it compresses it so i'm very impressed with this tool i like it a lot i'm using the free version by the way because you don't have to go for the paid version unless you deal with large scale images the free version allows you to use 15 image compressions per day and the paid version is unlimited or 50 one of the two so yeah um i am taking dates to so keep my mouth helpful i hope you enjoyed this video i'm trying to keep my energy up i'm not going to be singing someone recommended that i should not sing next time so yeah it's done and you need to you need to download that image that is compressed it really compresses where the image is stored so this is amazing i love it So what you just do now is that you just drag your image and bring it to the okay no that no that i don't want to do that you just you can come over here to import sorry images have image you already if you want to import a new thing just come here that's something you can do um yeah so now where are we you have the hero wrap in the hero wrap you go to your background image background sorry for that background image Gradients. color transparency you press plus you choose your image choose this image you see that it's custom cover contain choose cover it's compared to this you can see the guy's face again you adjust it where does it look where does it look where does it look you know you're not seeing what you want oh this is fine this is also fine too. so let's leave it at this side here um yeah and that's that you're done i think if you press not uh, mm -hmm. so you're done with the background image now let's continue the hero wrap has something in common that's 24 border radius so to do the border radius we're going to come over here to the border radius and you do 24 you can see we're done now we've done that amazing isn't it amazing so now we've done that now let's do the nav bar we're going to do the hero text button and this bottom part so this is what we have left um navbar so let's go navbar now you have two options we have the nav default navbar um where is it where is it where is it where is, it? Where is, it? Where is that bad boy get it here look at this like and if you come to mobile it already has this here and it has a default styling that allows you to do this we don't want that what the style we're looking for is different. Normally, I use this in my designs. I'll be honest with you. I use this in my builds for clients and likes. But right now, we don't want it. We're going to create our own app bar from scratch. Give it a semantic HTML styling. And give it interactions for it to work on all big points. And I'll click and hover and things like that. So this is what we're going to do. Here up a div. Come over here to settings. This semantic HTML style you now call it nav. Now it's a navigation. It's no more a div. Just any div a navigation. And um, now you're going to give it a link block. Because if you know now, almost every browser, every web page has their logo at the top left. And the logo links to the home page. It's like a default style now. So you don't need, you don't need a home page um, nav link. It just like use the logo as the home page. So that's why I'm doing that. I'm going to call that brand. For now, let's wait. Um, aside that again, we're going to need the nav menu. So that's another div again that will contain all the 
mini. No, I think they better explain this. Let me explain this. This logo. If you click on it, you're supposed to take it to this page or take it back up to the page or something. Or calling it the logo. Yeah. This is the navbar hamburger menu. And when you click on this, it should open this. Right? Exactly. And all of these that is here that are here are called nav links. And these nav links are stored in the nav menu. So what I'm trying to say is that you are going to have a nav menu. Menu. Typos. And that nav menu, you're going to have under div again. That will store other things though. But firstly, we're going to store the that clickable link. Pong, pong. What's that? What's that? Pong, pong. And we're going to have the nav menu. What am I saying? Guard my thoughts, please. Yeah, so the hamburger icon menu. So this hamburger stuff that turns from X to dash dash. I'm gonna have it in the nav bar. So, so we're gonna call it let's say um am icon. Cool, right? So now we can do some styling already. So is this am icon hamburger icon? I don't know. That's the name I can think of right now. Let's call it 64. If you check the yeah, check the space, 65 pixels width. And so let's give it 64 height and width. So 64 in rem is 4 rem, and that is 4 rem here as well. 4 rem, and um, so now the navigation is settled, but we're not done. Let's call this one navbar. I'm gonna give it flex box, I'm gonna give it space between. Now you cannot, you, you don't know what I'm flexing, like you know. So, what I'm gonna do is just for, for this brief moment, I'm gonna give this. Now I'm icon a background color of white, and um, now this navbar. Let's demo the. This was was before. When we gave it flex box, this is what it became. When we gave it space, sorry, space between, this is what it became, and um, yeah, I'm give it stretch center. Now this link block that we had here, is where we're gonna put the logo. And remember, if, I don't know if I mentioned, I don't think I mentioned it before. Webflow has some good things about it is that you can copy as an image, you can copy as an SVG or you put as an image. So if you're using the paid Webflow version, you can copy as SVG. That's one. And you come over to Webflow and you can either paste it with, let me show you two options of pasting SVG. Custom, um, embed, code embed, this is it, this is one way, if you save it now. Is there and that option is doing this? So let me go back to the doc. Doing this, you install for apps, you search for SVG imports like Figma plugins, SVG imports, you launch it and you paste the SVG code here. And you can see the difference. Now, I'm going to we're going to use this the second one, this color one, but this first one, what it does is that it's a code, SVG is a code. And if you notice now, you see it, it has default, it has a specific style, it has a specific height. No matter what you do, you cannot resize it. Um, you, unless you want to write the code there and change it, which I normally do before I find out about the second option. The field is white. If I change it to black now, black. See, any change color to black. If I change it to red. Any change it to red. No. So you can, it's, you can basically write the code. Sorry, right? Yeah, same as this. And for this one, it takes the color of the background. So this link block now. Let's assume we give it white or red or this or that, and that makes it more adjustable, more palatable, more admirable, editable. So that's what I'm trying to say: editable. And we can just change it to brand, let's change it to from brand. Or we can change it to logo. If it helps you feel better, brand logo. Brand logo. And uh, yeah, so that's the thing. So I'm gonna cancel it. You can edit this um, code embed to fit the styling you want, give it current color to adapt to the color you change it to. Well that's not stressful. If if it's too can do it for you easily, why bother doing that method, you know? So that's what that's my take.
um so the arm high come now is here we don't need this background color the way we put it so we move that but what we need now is to add um Ham icon. Um, let's say ham line. Let's call it ham line. This ham line is gonna be like um, eight pixels. So that's like they were five rem. Gonna be hundred percent. It's gonna be white background. Um, yeah. And it's gonna be duplicated. Yeah. And it's gonna be flex box. Yeah. I'm gonna be bottom flex box. Yeah. And the spacing is going to be like um, 8 pixel spacing or 12. Yeah. And I'm going to, instead of stop, I'm going to make it center. Yeah. And this looks too thick. So let's see what we chose. What we what did there. And 3 rem. 3. So we can change it from 8 pixels to 3. So 3 divided by 8. That, now that's very tiny. Sheesh, very tiny. But I think that's what we did, right? So we can wait until later, but for now that's there and um yeah the logo let's just send the logo height so let's make it more custom so we use 37.4 37 37.9 so so we come back to the brand logo not this svg but the brand logo and give it a height of 40. now that's what I said to say 37.9 is it 37 or 39 yeah it's very close so let's use 40. and what's the width if it is 244 yeah, you can see that this is not going. It's not going big. It's fine. Yeah, if I give hundred percent, let me show you something. It's takes the whole space, bro. Doesn't want to wants to grow bigger. So when you give a specific width, two four four, it takes a small space, which is very important because in responsiveness, we now keep all these things in mind. That's what we're looking okay. You get it, just. Oh my god, my mouse is spinning already. So now that is that. We tested that already. We've got our ham icon and nav menu and all this good stuff. So, um, what we can now do is that this hero wrap, you know, there's, a, there's a space here, 112. So, we can either give the pattern the 112 and make the pattern absolute positioning and either make it on scroll, it can scroll to all these things here. But I just feel, even feel like that option. So, that why not make the pattern inside there, stay here, and uh, make the part of this design and not give this. Um, hero wrap one one two, so everything is one one two except this one that is. I don't know, we'll come to down later. So what we're going to do now is going to make this. This one about firstly we're going to give it a top and bottom padding of. Let's see. What's the spacing between from the bottom? Zero nine twenty four. So is it twenty four? And the error wrap is going to be 112. So that's that. Looks okay. No big issue. Wow, I'm talking so much. Man, I'm getting so pushed. Now, where are we now? Nathaniel Drill, this is here. Now, let's deal with Nav already. Let's. Yeah, so let's deal with the hero content. So let's call this hero con sorry div first. Then the div is what we call hero contents. Hero content. That's no um now we can now like look for text. So h1 h h1 oh my god my brain now I told you that this are meant to be one text, so I'm gonna make everything one. I am Anthony Geo, artist, creator, director, filmmaker. You don't you find out how we're gonna separate the sorry. At some point now, this is it. Um I admit that this is not the best design I've come up with. But I think it helps cover some core principles in the workflow. Um so Anthony Geo I think design is not bad, so I'm not talking about design right now. And now the button. Because this button is going to be using an icon that is going to be animated, we're, we're not going to use the default workflow button, which is the reason why I didn't style it in the style guide section. Because it's not a common button. It's a, it's a 
they're gonna be a link block. So what we're gonna do, we're going to come over here to like this again. Inside the arrow content, I mean, I come over here, add a link block. I'm gonna add a text. See, um, which is what the text gonna be. Get my free resources and um, yeah this thing dog we're gonna call it button hey it looks fine now right <laughs> so after that now we cannot come over here to duplicate this um copy as svg um okay so paste it as an svg Telling me the SVT, no one to be to tell me the one not be. So then that's very big, right? And that's pretty about SVT. It can be as big as you want, but it doesn't look like it's very big, you know. And um, yeah, you can now give it an icon. In the style, I think that is icon style. So you can icon one times one large. This is probably 32 pixels, which is like two rem or two. I don't know. Let's, let's try medium because that's the two rem. And the small one is the one that is one rim. So I can one that is one small. It's like one rim. Looks so small. I don't like how small it is. We can just like tweak it to fit our own styling. 1.5 is okay, right? Yeah, so that's the um twenty-four. Um, H1. So now, because we don't want to adjust this H1 styling, like, we want to. Let me, see, let me say something. So, we can see here now the artist creator, director, filmmaker. The styling I wanted for it was sometimes animated and stuff. I don't, I feel like, okay, that's just over doing it. Let's just keep it there. So, instead of. Um, if you notice now, in mobile view, it's going to change to being the same ultra. But in text of view, the other director of filmmaker is apparent, it's bold out. So it's 64 pixels semi bold. What we're going to do is now, it's going to like align this 64, um, all of this. Give it a span. Give it the name of a span. You can call it display, like we did in the design. In the display, we're going to change the styling to 64. The bigger. Give this um, style to semi bold. It's bold out. But it doesn't look so fine now. So what I'm gonna do now we come to the arrow contents. I'm gonna resize the arrow contents because they are, it's all um fewer. Right? So it's gonna be five nine eight. No, I'm gonna make it smaller than that. So just make sure it's like compressed to this. So if I do this ugh, it's like what is it? Four four three three. Because um I know diff let's see, four three three. Like the same doesn't look so fine, so we're gonna give it some more space. Yeah, now this looks better. As it's created like the filmmaker. You see? And um yeah, and in the hero content we cannot give you flex box. Button flex box. Like I can see this button is extending all the way there. But now what I'm gonna do is gonna give it left. So the button stays where it is, yeah. Yeah. Um give me let me just take small dates. I'm out, spinning me. If you enjoyed the video so far, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think so far. I appreciate it. I'll make it as fast as possible so I'll be faster, you know. I just I just don't want to build and not give it the process where I'm doing some things. So yeah, link block, this down. What else? Um we started that. I think that's that's it, right? Um, let us now do this bottom part, this logo part. I didn't really animate it when I was designing it during my own time. Oh. Yeah, let's, let's just wait. Let's do, let's do what we want to do. We call it logo bottom or brand bottom. So let's call it hero div first. Call it div. Like, name your layers. Control F, add a frame. Name a frame. That's how it is. So hero bottom. Hero logo. A hero bottom, I don't even know. 
sorry i'm smacking my lips so now we're going to give it a text that's one in that text we're going to give them that div that's two in that div we're not going to have a logo so we're going to call that div logo wrap and i'll be honest with you there are so many effects i could have done with this um with this logo stuff it could be the um, marquee effect it could be as you scroll it moves i just feel like let's keep it simple you know yeah maybe i was lazy too i'm sorry but yeah maybe if you guys watch this video completely and you want me to show some effects with this thing maybe i feel like it's better it's simple that's how i felt so this um so now i'm going to copy it as an svg like i said before if you are not using a paid workflow you might need to copy as png this section now requires a paid workflow account because we're using code and you can only use code on the paid workflow account well there's some uh, when we get there we'll talk about that but for now yeah so what am i saying bro my brain logo wrap yeah so this logo wrap we're gonna add the launch and we're gonna get the launch control v this is there now we're gonna resize this to fit the default logo style one so and this logo wrap right this is a logo logo from the logo now i'm going to check what's the height of the logo 48 what's the width 77 so we're going to assume every height of logo should be 48 too so that's just 48 divided by 16 that's 3 rem 77 um width that's that we can make it five just for um consistency i guess let's call it that because five is 80 77 is that so they're very close and yeah then you could use it for all the images you have so luckily we have only three logo types normally it should be like one of each each company must have their own logo but in this scenario this is what we put there this is what i put there next time um control v svg logo if you call it logo now styles this is what I talked about when you are using the same styling for different things. So the same styling used for the first, first logo, the same one used for the second logo. And that way you're going to use less code rather than styling each of them on their own. Very, very important if you want to maximize styles and make it work more efficient. So copy as SVG again. Come over here. Click on the logo wrap, not the logo here, but the logo wrap. Because if you use the logo, it's going to affect the world. It's going to make a mess, big mess. And you can paste it here. Like we did last time, we're gonna give it logo, a class of logo. And with that said, it is done. From there, we're gonna now duplicate each of them. So duplicate, bring it right down here. This one to duplicate, bring it all the way down here. Post it. See what I'm talking about? It's entered each other. Um, so yeah. Yep, and last one duplicates and bring it down. Yeah, and this logo wrap, I'm gonna give it space around flex first. Give it um, left space around like you know, last time we space between, but space around gives space at the edges of each. So, so I, just, I can like that effect in this scenario, just this scenario, no other scenario. partner with top brands and let's copy it from here it's system pixel semi board just like the button text so we can just paste it and we can give it its own text let's call it um we can call it system pixels system pixels board i guess system pixels inter let's call it system pixels inter i think it's going to be a font we're going to call back another time in the future like and that part of the web page might need it so we'll call it that but it's not i don't think it is but anyways this is this is a way of setting, setting your style guide. So it says let's assume you don't want to set the style guide like I did in the first part. It's a designing it. You can set your style guide. So whatever you use before, you can like oh let me call it back. You know, I just prefer using the style guide. Makes me better. Makes me work more efficient. Um. So now I'm going to style it. 
this is a specific class give it enter so sorry gonna give it one rem gonna give it um capitalization gonna give it semi bold yeah so what else that's it and the arrow bottom i'm gonna give it a flex box too because if you notice here it's at the center this all of them are like this so arrow bottom that's what contains the text this inter text and this logo wrap arrow bottom give it flex box looks messy give it vertical height looks a bit better move from stretch put to center looks a little better this logo wrap is all coming to the center here give it a width of 100 percent looks a little better this hero bottom looks squished you know so what's the spacing that we we'll give it in the design 24 pixel spacing and top and bottom top and bottom 24 spacing so that's gonna be like 24 um 24 gap 24 gap that's one and if you notice now it's giving you a space here but this is a fixed space if you duplicate it and if you know come back here you see it's not really there and also do you notice that there's a um a line over here you notice that and that line is um 60 pixels one one high one pixels so you can come over here border press the stop give it white yeah and that's it the line is there you can now reduce the opacity of the line to like 60. and then from there you cannot give it 24 top and you can use the alt to adjust it to make it bottom too as well you can type it manually and that's the fold and bottom now where were we where were we there's a big there's a big issue with some face um yeah why is it at the bottom let's let's make fix this up you know so first things first this is at the bottom let's fix at the bottom um there's no correct style in here and if we want it to be at the bottom as we resize through all breakpoints this is what we have to keep position in mind so what i did instead instead of just resizing and giving the padding that you have to adjust all through i came over here to the position i gave it absolute positioning looks terrible for now give it the bottom padding this bottom stuff here and yeah it's thin at the bottom probably now it's thin at the wrong bottom it's thin at the bottom relative to the body and i want it to be relative to the arrow wrap so what do we do because in the design it's related to the arrow wrap like it's only the arrow wrap that it can stay near right you know you can see it's neat it's dead it you can see so um from there what you can do is that you give this euro wrap a position of relative and you just see the magic happen it raised to the wrap magic so uh, i'll come back to the euro bottom again now and because i told you that in the way i'm looking at it again this looks fine the way it is you know i don't know why i didn't do this earlier like for some reason but it's fine okay but what did i do that made this um turn stay at the left like it doesn't come out like it stays there is to use um this ones here so looks like we made the spacing here and make it seven rem you can do the same for this bottom one here you can call it seven rem so seven rem the spacing is there over here so seven rem and yeah that's it and it's just this line right now i don't like i like the other one sorry i like this i like how this one looks like but for some reason i feel like it should be animated or something right now i don't know i'm having mixed thoughts but right now this there's we have two options just go with the flow or i go back to design style just, let's go back to design style but i like this i like the way it was fully bleeded and stuff I don't know, for some reason i don't like it there's no design decision behind that so it's just looking fine to me so now this is um absolute if you remember it's absolute if we give this hero wrap flex box now it doesn't be to flex box anymore because it's not it's, it's absolutely it's not in the dom like it's i don't know how to explain it in the right words but it's not going to be flex box anymore as soon as we give it relative now let's say we give it relative it will be flex box but because we didn't because we don't give relative so let me just control z yeah and what we're going to do euro content now give it a I'll be arrow wrap, we're gonna give it a flex box of bottom, I'll be vertical, give it um spacing of what's the spacing? Yeah, so let's look at it. What's the spacing between this one and this one? Sixty three. Um but and then when I tried sixty three it doesn't look it didn't look so good. So as a gap here, yeah, so let's try 
That's 64. That's for him. It's okay, not bad. But I think what I did was I made him more like 6 rem or so. Yeah, or 5 rem. Let's look at eye direction, you know. That's okay, that's all. So, with all that said, I think we are done with the. Okay, let's make it responsive. So, we'll come back to this one. You can see it's, it's not so good. Um, we could just reduce it to 2.5. I think this, this is not bad. So, also here too. You can reduce it to 2.5. We can just. Yeah, you can just give it that to 0 M. And that's that. And, um. Mobile landscape. Yeah, I know what. You can even do this too. We can remove the padding over here. So, this padding we are seeing here, we can remove it. This. Um, Europe stuff that I was seeing here too that has but I we can move it and it now looks less like that. Let's call it that. So and what else? What else? I'm forgetting something. Yeah. This is okay. Creative director at yeah, I think it's okay like the way it is. Then for this one, let's adjust the display to make it fit the heading one. So the one is what two rem on mobile. So this display, let's give it two rem to mobile. Two rem. Let's give it um regular normal, and um yeah. So now if we give it enough spacing, just let me show you an example. With enough spacing, you see it's it's, it's it, they are all gonna align together, but because we want it to keep here not any zero. How did I design it in my panel? So I want to say something. Hey, I'm at an edge. Okay. So we can make it. Hey, I'm at an edge. Artist creator of America. Yeah, not bad, right? Not bad. And um, this is the button is still there. And if you come over to this. Oh, yeah, that's true. Let's adjust the logo. Sorry. Um, over here you see 24 pixels so we can just look over here so brand and I can make 24 pixels height so 24 and you can make it I think we can just check it what was it 154 so you can type in 154 154 as 9 make it 9 rem 9.6 so I can make it 10 rem yeah I think it's okay it's okay the way it is the 24 pix padding is still working well and yeah this is looking straight into it and over here yeah it looks so close you can't read it very well anymore yeah it's not like this this is where you want to um what should i suggest yeah look at this logo it's never looking fine so one second so this logo stuff is okay here yeah. it's not so good here yeah, but it's not so bad either so all we can do is since hundred percent we can give it um scroll as always display a scroll bar for affluent content scroll bar. So now what's gonna happen is if it comes to mobile and it's sorry. Oh huh. is that is that what I did? So it's meant to be auto then. So mobile huh. something is wrong. I think it is scroll bar. I visited before. But let's see when we publish it, we'll find out. So, um, I think it's also something about having a minimum um, width or something. So, over here, the logo wrap is five. So, what's the minimum? It must not go below what? So, if you check this design here, what do we? 32. So, it must not go below 32 width. So, minimum width is 2, two rem. 32 pieces. Um, so if you come over here now, none of them are going below 32. I'm guessing. I think we'll fix this one for now. I'm really comfortable what's going on there. For this image, the background that we have at the area wrapper, we can adjust it if we want to match what we're looking for. So if you come over to like this, we want it to be down or sideways or something. Like maybe it's like this, maybe it's better like this. 
and over here you want it to be yes, let's try three minutes this is like my phone space this is my phone what's it called my phone this is my phones 80 81 82 86 so you can really adjust it the way you want it to be and um yeah that's it so we've already made it responsive we've designed the area section we've not we've not limited the button um so i think we still have like less than 10 minutes before an hour so let's, let's do that right now so the button um the button interaction is more like let me open it over here to Nathaniel. i'm so sorry i didn't the button so firstly you can see this here this is the view what i doing the magic you can see if it comes all the way up it still goes all the way up if it comes all the way down it's like and the buttons like this is the button i don't it may not be the best thing i've done honestly I don't like this way the arrow is doing it, but we're not putting it in, the, in the, this one. We're gonna, I'm going to show you guys. But yeah, let's talk about that. And this one, in the next video, we're going to talk about this. So, um, where are we? How do we do this button? Okay, we're back there. So this is our, yeah, this is our workflow build. Um, we'll come over to button over here. I'm going to give it. This is the button and this text system pixels inside the same thing i'm going to get the button because the button is to have a class for this thing to work well so go with system pixels enter nothing changes because they're the same thing now we're going to duplicate it duplicate yeah we're going to give it like a no wrap um wrap no normal line no wrap shit no wrap just make sure it stays the way it is and one of the buttons going to get is absolute is absolute is absolute right, because they have to be on top of each other so let me show you something so if i give it um absolute i think they're on top of each other now so the one is here the other one is there on top of each other you cannot recognize the difference again and um yeah let's give it relative positioning just because of this, it's, can, it's my, I've gone out and we don't know. So it's, it's okay like this now. Now come over here to interactions and mouse over. So the interaction, it only works on desktop, by the way. So no need to do it on mobile. And hover, start animation. What's the animation? Scroll it button over. So we have um, the initial states. So let's say that's even true. I'm com it's something I forgot to do. Oh, don't worry. We'll figure. Sorry, I'm just. Let's go back to the interactions. What were we doing before? Button over. So now it starts with the initial states. This button is going to have. Um, as you can see, let's look at it again. An over comes from bottom, one goes up, one comes from down. That means one has to be down before it can work. So let's say um, move the way it is, it is, let's call it zero. Sorry, it's using the y axis, not the x axis, so zero pixels. It's okay. And for the one that is under, so let's call it initial states by the way, give it initial states. So that's how it is normally on page load. This are this next one, so give it a plus, give it move. And this is absolute, um, you can give it, um, this will be shorter than 20 pixels. You can see it's down there. We can keep reducing it. So like, let's say 50 pixels. You can see the way it is. Where it is. I'm going to give it 40. 40 is okay. We are just waiting for you, but you can see this is a line of the button, so it's below the button line. Let's call it that. I was outside the button line, but the button border. I'm yeah, forgetting my language. Um, yeah, okay, so that's that. By the way, again, I don't know if I told you when I styled this button, so now I have the left button, but that's a right button. This is one of the styles I did previously, so you might not have seen when I did it, or you might have seen it. I'm not even sure, but. 
just in case you're confident. When did the person get this style and stuff? Yeah, I did this at some point. I'm sorry if I didn't show you that. Um, so that is there. So this will, so give it initial states too. As initial states. And what else? Yeah, we, so I said I'm going to animate this thing. I like the way it's just static. It's better that way. It looks so terrible when it's moving like this. Um, so that's that. So we're not going to duplicate it. I will not give it move. So this one that is enter now, you know that this first one is what? Um, 40 pixels. So now this first one that is also enter, we're going to give 40 pixels minus 40 pixels up. Up. And the second one, we're going to give it 0 pixels. So where that one is supposed to be. So if you look at it now, that's what's going to happen. That's what's happening. And, um, Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna they're gonna hold these two together. You're gonna give it like in out quads or something. Something fast. So zero point three. Um you can see it. Um so now um yeah, so that's you can save it. You now must make it it is an overhand, so if you look at it now on overhand. It stays there. We make it we need to make an out animation so when you over house what happens so on hover out start an animation come over here the trick to, is not to create a new animation but to duplicate the old one and you now use it i now call it on hover button over out and on over out you delete the first two that were there and you now make this ones initial information states so they are going to go back to where they were before they get the trick the initial state is what we want it to return to. So, so let me show you something now. So, so over here. Let's come back. And I can see the animation is not fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make it um, in out. You know, if, if we use in out quads when we over out quads, it's going to be good when we over. So, so that's that's how it is. Then. Is it, it, we've seen the bare bones enough, so we can now go to the button and now press look for overflow hidden. What this does is that we will not see the other part again. This is going to be like this. You get, and that's it. So I hope that was understandable to you. Fifty three minutes so far in this video. In the next videos, we are going. To, let me let's check it again. And that's even true. I said we'll check this thing out. So let's let's exp Let's press publish. Let's check it out. Um, how does that one look like a mobile view? So, because if you look at the one I did here, the one, the one I finished up in Nigeria, this is a mobile view. You can actually swipe to see more logos. So I must have made an issue, some an error somewhere. Yeah, why billions? So we're gonna check it again now. Let's go back and go back. Close this shit. No comment. Hero button. After that, overflow. We'll go wrap. Hmm. Surprisingly, is it not? What's going on here? Enter. Oh. I think we can give this one overflow hidden to make sure that nothing comes out of here but also this button they have minimum so in this one i give it the minimum so i use it and give it the minimum width from the top here so minimum of 32 pixels which is 2 rem um what else um yeah, something's wrong. I don't know I'm not getting this thing here. If convert logo wrap and give it more size options. 
give it all to and you publish it. This is how that looks like. I'm sort of confused. Now I'm figuring that with you. Oh, that's when you look at this. It's looking too big. We need to reduce it too. Okay, that's it working well. At this point, I'm very. Oh, I'm going to check what I did last time. You know, that's the really way it is. What else? We want to reduce the padding and be the width of this one here for mobile view. So, it was 4M before. We can give it. It is just 3M. So, in the design, we use 3M. We get smaller. Also, here, yeah, so we use 3M. Smaller. And um, remember, it's just, it must also be center. Remember, this is important. So, yeah. And if, if I need to make it smaller or bigger, you can adjust that. But for now, this is everything for the Euro section. In mean, the next video, we're going to be animating the nav bar. So stay tuned for that. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to give me some feedback or some comments. They go a long way, and I'll be giving you those that respond well and giving some feedback, some one-on-one -on -one coaching. So thank them. So yeah, see you guys. Bye.